And we're going to turn now to a story that has gripped the nation for more than a year. Those American hikers arrested on the board of Iran and accused of spying. Sarah Shord was one of them. She spent 410 days in solitary confinement before being released just over a week ago. Her fiancé Shane Bauer and friend Josh Vital are still in prison awaiting trial, but Sarah is free and she joins us now. Thank you for being here today. Mm, thank you. I know you're in New York hoping to meet with President Ahmadinejad. Any indication that's going to happen? Um, no, we're just waiting, you know. We still have hope that that might happen today. What do you want to say to him? I just want to um, really beseech him, encourage him to, um, to end this for Shane and Josh, for our families, to extend the same humanitarianism that was extended to me, to my companions. As you know, he has said that the United States should release eight Iranians held in prison here in the United States as a humanitarian gesture. Is that what you'd like to see as well? You know, I'm, I don't work with the government. I don't have any control over these things. And to be honest, I don't even really have an opinion. I want this to be resolved in a way that improves relationships between Iran and the United States, because I think that's better for people in this country and in Iran. But I'm not an expert on how that should be resolved. I just want it to be resolved. What an experience you had, 410 days in solitary confinement. Take us back to the moment where this all began. What happened? Um, you know, I'm going to be speaking about that a lot, but the most important thing is just that we were hiking behind a tourist site and there was absolutely no indication of a border, so we had no intention of going to Iran. Um, it, a mistake was made. This whole thing has been a huge misunderstanding. And just to be clear, uh, you've been accused of spying, your response? Um, like I said, there's absolutely no evidence for that. We committed no crime and we meant no harm to the Iranian people or the government. So you were not spying? No. As they took you into custody and brought you into prison, just describe for us what the days were like. Uh, relentless, you know, grueling. Um, it's a small cell and my whole day was centered around waiting for the very brief periods that I saw Shane and Josh. They really sustained me through this with their strength. I would pace in my room, wringing my hands for hours before I had an opportunity to see them and then it was so brief it was over in a second you know but every time I felt like I was gonna completely lose my grip they brought me back they're strong compassionate people and they've committed no crime and they have no idea when they're gonna get out of this situation this, they're stuck in the same size cell that I was in but side by side you know they have to exercise on a space the size of a towel um, they don't know when they're gonna get out what did you say to them before you left what did they say to you they were happy for me. Um, you know, if they were feeling any disappointment, they hid it from me because I know it gives them confidence that now um, they have a voice through me and their pain is more visible because I can speak about what they're going through. No one can see what prisoners endure. You know, a lot of people say that I look okay, but it's because no one's ever going to see what I looked like in my cell when I was screaming and crying and pounding on the door and no one came to help me. And Shane and Josh are still there, and I want the world to be able to see them. They don't deserve to be there, and I want the world to help them. You described the desperation so well, yet there was also a moment, I imagine, of great joy in prison. You got engaged. Yeah, that was. Um, yeah, that was completely unexpected. But um, Unexpected? Well, not. I mean, I was hoping for it for a long time. I was actually planning on asking Shane upon our release, but he beat me to it. Um, it was, you know, not the typical idea of romantic, but extremely romantic in the, in the circumstances. He wove together a little ring? Yeah, yeah, I'm still wearing it. It's just red and white from string from his t-shirt. Oh, it's gorgeous. Hmm. I know when you came home, uh, you said you didn't have the feelings you expected to have, have upon being set free. You felt only one-third free. And that's still very much true. I mean, now I'm experiencing a lot of the anxiety and the constant ups and downs and uncertainty that our families have been going through all the time. And, and the sa it's the same inside and outside, really, is you have a little bit of hope and then it gets um, crushed and you just have to keep going and hoping that this will end tomorrow, tomorrow, you know. The Iranians are still saying there's going to be a trial. You won't return for that, right? Um, you know, I'm not ruling anything out, but I'm not ruling anything in. I hope that that doesn't have to happen. If that's what it takes to prove that we um, committed no crime and meant no harm and are absolutely innocent, I would be willing to do it. Okay, Sarah Short, thanks very much. Good luck today. All right, thanks.